This is so very embarrassing. One would think that I am far too old to be getting myself into these types of situations. If any of the clergy could see me now, I'm sure they would mistake me for a new blood. And given the circumstance, I suppose I could hardly blame them. Losing track of time and spending all night in the chapel, kneeling at the altars, an error only a novice would be making. How clumsy of me to be stuck here once again. A vampire of my station, skipping pebbles while sulking in the shade, until the sun is high and the shadows are defined enough to walk through. Oh, surely the blisters I would get from the light would be less bothersome than this frustration. Honestly, how shameful can you possibly be, Ottavon? It's not as if you need any help in that regard, if how your night wind is anything to consider. The seasons pass. Years flow by like rain showers now, yet despite this constant flux, I haven't managed to change myself at all. Still the same as when I stepped into this chantry all those many decades ago. It is often said in the doctrine that the invisible black is boundless in its patience, as even time itself must yield to its entropy. But even then, aren't I taking far too long? I have my duties to the church, as all of the chosen do, yet I find myself halted time and time again. I wonder if I shall ever see the summit of this mountain I struggle with. If next time will be any different. Or indeed if it shall be the same as always. As a chosen, I have an obligation to fulfill towards Vanite and the church that they have founded. The Cabal has made this eminently clear many times. I only wish there was a better way. This is so frustrating. Even more so that I had hoped that I would have some time to make breakfast to surprise him when he woke up. But alas, that also seems to be fading with the receding dark. Maybe I can Make it up with a nice lunch instead. I'm certain I could manage at least that. Ah, uh, but first, perhaps I should freshen myself up a bit. A full night of praying and attempting to do my clerical duties doesn't tend to leave one in the most presentable of states. I can scarcely imagine what a sight I must make like this. Hair all a mess and bags under my eyes. It's decided then. A quick trip to my quarters to make myself presentable, followed by preparing some food, and then I can be on my way to seeing him again. An excellent plan. Now all there is to do is just wait until I can do that. I would rather not have to wait on the light, but I suppose a disheveled form is far easier to fix than a burned one. At least the flowers are here to keep me company, and they look so nice in the sunlight. I think it's a bit hard to see them when it's this bright out, but if I squint I can make them out somewhat. Yes, indeed, a lovely purple, a blue, perhaps. Ah, oh my goodness, he 
you startled me, dear. I didn't even notice you walking up. Oh, I nearly had a heart attack. Or well, I would have if I was capable of having one anyway. Oh, oh no, no, it's, it's quite alright, dear. I am somewhat out of sorts today. I've had a long night. <laughs> as ironic as that might sound. I'm sorry we couldn't spend some time eating breakfast together, but... But as you can see, I found myself temporarily trapped by my own carelessness. Not to make excuses as to why I was not waiting to greet you when you awoke, of course. I understand that it's a bit rude to ask, but would you be okay with waiting here with me for a bit longer? When the sun rises some more, I should be able to walk through the courtyard without any issue. Oh yes, when the sun is at its highest is ironically when the courtyard is safest for vampires, safe for the night of course. This chantry is a rather old structure, so its inner courtyard only has covered paths, where the newer buildings tend to boast a full dome, so light can never reach the inside. The latter is obviously safer, but I find that the old way has its bugs. For example, I would hardly be able to grow a garden without light, now would I? The herbs and plants that I grow here are well worth the risk, I think. Tending to them is a treasured hobby of mine, as you know, and all of the medicine that helps you on the road to recovery was grown right here, so you of all people should know how useful having such things on hand is. <laughs> Though, I'm sure you could do without the foul tasting ones. If that look you wear tells me anything. <laughs> well, while we are on the subject, you seem to be doing much better. You had no issues walking around all on your own. That's just marvelous, dear. You're getting stronger every day. Though, I would still prefer to accompany you should anything unexpected happen. Getting injured again after coming so far would be just dreadful. Uh, I apologize if I seem a bit overbearing. I just can't help being such a worrywart about you. Truly, all that I hope for is for you to make a full recovery and to be happy and healthy. So, I hope you don't mind if I dote on you from time to time. I'm glad you don't mind, dear. Honestly, I would find it rather difficult to stop. Seeing you do so well in your recovery brings a smile to my face. And it just makes me want to praise you. Oh, listen to me prattling on. I'm sorry, dear. I'm such a mess at the moment. I didn't want you to see me in such a state with all of... Well, you can plainly see. Here you are, picking yourself up, getting better, and... Here I am in a state that more befits a pauper. By the void, what a juxtaposition that is. Something out there is certainly having quite a hearty laugh at poor old Otavon. Once again, playing the part of the fool. Oh, never you mind that. As I said before, it has been a, a rather long night for me. I don't mean to bore you by getting into it too much, but... A brief summary, let's... Just say that upholding some aspects of my religious tenets is, at times, difficult. 
especially within the current accepted doctrine of the church. In those moments of conflict, I have always found it helpful to kneel before the altar of Anite under the cloak of darkness and direct my concerns inward, doing as best I can to search for something, anything that could help. And occasionally, I do, and I share those thoughts with my fellows within the clergy. Unfortunately, that sort of practice isn't terribly well received, especially by some of the more higher ranked members within the church. As far as they're concerned, all questions are easily answered through the sermons they give to the masses. The truths they speak are absolute, leaving no room for alternative views. I believe that was a minor deciding factor in my assignment here in this lonely chantry. Sat at the fringes of Evan Meyer's borders, serving as little more than an upkeep station for whatever detachments of the bone tide happened to wander by. Perhaps some important people simply wish to keep me out of the public eye for a time. I cannot truly say. In any case, I can scarcely view my time here as a punishment. After all, if this place was meant to act as my prison, it has done a rather poor job of it. While it has caged my body easily enough within its cold stone walls, my mind is wholly unshackled, free to ponder the vast dark for any answers that Vanite wishes to show me. I can only hope that my spirit is ready to receive them when they do present themselves. Oh, I'm rambling again, aren't I? I apologize again, dear. I'm not in the best of shape currently. Though no, you're such a dear for staying and listening to me go on and on. Talking through my worries makes me feel quite a bit better, so thank you. I still think some sleep would do wonders for me, but that brings us back to the original issue. I suppose I shall have to wait another hour or two until it's safer to walk down the paths. Oh. Oh, excuse me. I must be more tired than I thought. What? Why are you taking your jacket off? I didn't think it was that warm out today. Though, I tend to dress warmly regardless, since I don't put off heat like you do. Is that not it? You... Wait, excuse me? You want to use that to shade me and block the sun so that we can get by? That, that's incredibly sweet. I'm sorry. I'm not sure why I teared up just now. I, I don't want to inconvenience you. I'm perfectly okay with waiting for a little longer. Oh, well, I see you're quite insistent on the matter. I suppose that refusing such a kind gesture would be quite rude. There is another thing, however. It's nothing too severe, so by all means, don't feel as if you need to do it. Well, if you're... If you aren't fully aware of how deeply vampires differ from humans, many of our senses are adapted to work in extremely low light conditions. 
Our eyes specifically have evolved over time to see perfectly in utter darkness. This does mean, however, that we are quite sensitive to light. What is normal daylight to you is blinding to me. Indeed, the only reason I can see at all now is because it's the early morning. I suppose what I'm asking is... Would you possibly hold my hand for a while to guide me on the path? It's hard for me to see and I'm, I'm a bit scared I might step in the wrong place. It will only be for a while and I, I trust you to keep me safe. Thank you, dear. All right. Lend me your jacket so I might cover myself. I imagine this is as good as I will get it. Do you see anywhere I might have missed? Oh, very well, then. May I ask for your hand this morning? Oh my. Oh, it's, it's just that your hand is very soft. I'm not sure why I thought it would be any different to the parts of you I've touched before, yet I... I feel reassured. It's... it's quite pleasant. I'm glad you think so as well. Uh, in any case, I think I've had quite enough time to prepare myself. I will follow your lead, so shall we be off then? Uh, it's so bright, I can hardly see a thing. I believe we just passed the monk wisp plant. I can't really tell though. Is it is it getting harder for you? May maybe it's just my nerves, but I do feel a bit warm. Am I am I gripping too hard? I'm sorry, I I don't think I can loosen my grasp. I'm quite quite nervous out here. How much further do we have to... Oh. Oh. Oh, we're... we're right there. <laughs> Not quite a grand adventure, but... by the dark, such a short distance felt like decades. Well... Well, at least I have arrived safe and sound into the shadowy embrace of the Chantry proper. All thanks to the kind gentleman who escorted me in my time of need. Such a selfless act does require a show of thanks in turn, does it not? I believe I have just the thing. Peck on the cheek for the brave soul is fair compensation, I trust. <laughs> I can see you rather enjoyed your reward. I'm pleased to pay back your kindness. No, I believe that's enough excitement for me today. I should see about retiring so that I might rise fresh tonight. I... I would hate to ask, but I still am recovering a bit from the light earlier. Would you be so kind as to walk me to my quarters? You know where they are, I trust, from your many visits, so if it's not too much trouble. Thank you, dear. 
A sense of charity is indeed one of the grander virtues of both mortal and immortal beings. You possess a good heart, and that is indeed a rare thing. I can only hope that fate smiles on your good deeds as fondly as I do. Ah, here we are. Thank you once again for all the help. You've saved a humble priest's sleep schedule from certain doom. <laughs> I shall handle myself from here. No, no. I cannot ask you for more after all you've given. It would simply be rude of me. I will be turning in. You should rest for a bit as well. I think you can walk around and get a little bit more exercise, but please, don't overexert yourself. I shall return to your side when night falls, so... So be patient and wait for me until then, will you? Until next time, dear. Thank you for being there for me when I needed help. You are very sweet to me. Good day.